Hello, Grade 9 Science class. Welcome back to another lecture, Lesson 8. As you can see here, uh, this lesson is about the different types of circuits. Uh, there are two main types. There are parallel circuits and series circuits. Uh, and they are extremely different. Uh, we are going to treat them differently going forward. But first, we need to figure out what they are. So that's key point one and two. And then we're going to talk about how the resistance and the current is different in a parallel and a series circuit. And then some applications for it after that. So a series circuit. A series circuit is a circuit that has only one path for electrical current to flow, which means it does not create any branches or contain any branches. Sorry. So in this one right here, we have uh, the electrons starting here. They would flow down this wire through this load through this load, through this switch, which is closed. So that means that uh, the circuit is good to go and to the positive side of the battery. There is nowhere else for the electrons to go. They just go in a circle, boom, 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 square, whatever. So if one of the loads from the circuit is removed, like if you remove this light bulb, or if the light bulb burns out, then the circuit is broken and there will be no electricity flow through any of them. So an example would be some old Christmas lights. If one light go, goes, they all go. You have to find that one Christmas light that's burnt out and then you have to replace it. It can be difficult. Those lights don't exist as much anymore. But um, para, uh, series circuit Christmas lights were a big pain. One would burn out and the whole thing wouldn't work. A parallel circuit is a circuit that has two or more different paths for the electrical current to flow. And I should include in here, you should write as here, not including a voltmeter. A voltmeter does not count as a pathway. Uh, a voltmeter is a measuring device that goes on two points, but it does not allow extra, um, there's not, a, it's not a pathway for it. It's just a measuring device. So except for a voltmeter. If one device is removed or broken, then there is still another path for the electrical current to flow. So we can see here the electrons would start here, it would flow down this path to here, but then they have an option. They can go to bulb one or down bulb two or down bulb three, and then they meet up again. So if bulb one goes out, bulb two and bulb three still work. And the example would be like the lighting in your house. If you have one light burn out, it's not like all the lights in your living room go out you can just replace that one bulb and it will work from there. So the, all the lights um, that are in one room generally or on one circuit breaker, if you've seen that in your basement, um, all of those are like they have parallel uh, circuits for them. So if one thing goes out, they don't all go out. Essentially, series, one path, parallel, multiple paths. That's key. So there's a difference in the resistance of a series in a parallel circuit. Uh, in a series circuit, when you add another load, it increases the resistance. Essentially, there's only one path, so you're adding another load, you're adding more obstacles for the electrons to have to move through, and that increases resistance. If there is uh, two bulbs instead of one, that would be harder to get through. Uh, is, and like if there are four bulbs instead of two, that would be harder to get through. In a parallel circuit, if you add another load or another pathway, it actually decreases the resistance. There are more pathways for the electrons to flow through, which makes it easier for all of them. The electrons can flow this one or this one, and it just like it increases the ease with what the electrons can flow when there's more pathways. So that's a key, and I figure that'll be a question somewhere, either on the quiz or the test. Um, how does, what's the difference in resistance between a series and a parallel circuit? So in a series circuit, when you add another load, you increase the resistance. But in a parallel circuit, when you add another load, it decreases the resistance. Electrons can move through easier. Again, here you can see if you had another bulb and another bulb, there would be more obstacles in this series circuit. While in this one, if you were to add another bulb on the end and another bulb after that, there's more pathways and it's easier for those electrons to flow down more pathways. So resistance goes up, resistance goes down. The difference in current. So the resistance is how difficult it is to get electrons through, and then the current is how many charges are actually moving past a point at one time. So 
In a series circuit, the current is the same throughout the entire circuit, as there's only one way for the electrons to go, and they must be moving at the same speed. So in a series circuit, there's only one way for them to go, so the current is always moving this way, and it is always going at the same pace, no matter where you are in the circuit. The current is always the same. In a parallel circuit, the current is different throughout each branch of the circuit. So if these are all the same resistance bulb, then the current will all be the same. If this is one, and this resistance is two, and this resistance is three, you will naturally get more current flowing through the easier bulb, that's with resistance one. A little bit more, or sorry, a little bit less with resistance two, and a little bit, and even less with uh, resistance three. So in a parallel circuit, the current is different throughout each branch, and if there is low resistance, there's more current flowing through that pathway. If it's easier to get through, there's gonna be more current flowing through it. If there's high resistance, less current will flow through that pathway. And again, maybe this won't be on the quiz, um, but it might be on the test. You know, these are excellent, excellent questions to explain why there's current difference and resistance difference uh, in series and parallel circuits. So uh, definitely, I don't know if you have this in your booklet, but if you do, that's great. If you don't, definitely copy this down, highlight it, put some stars in because this is comparing them. So in a series circuit, there is one path compared to parallel circuits where there are several paths. Um, if you remove a load, so if you break the circuit in a series circuit, the electrons can't flow. But if you break a circuit in a parallel circuit, the electrons can continue to flow down the other paths. Uh, for resistance, when you add a load, it increases the resistance compared to parallel circuits when you add a load, the overall resistance of the circuit is decreased. And while the current is the same throughout the series circuits, the current will be different depending on the total resistance um, through each path in the parallel circuit. So we are actually going to apply Ohm's law in future lessons to these different um, situations. So you'll be able to apply Ohm's law to series and parallel circuits. When we have batteries or cells, remember batteries and cells are the same thing. Batteries and cells can also be in parallel or in series. So if we have cells or batteries in parallel, the effective voltage is the same as the voltage of a single cell. It's kind of just like a backup. The battery light of the, the life of the battery is the sum of the life of each cell. So batteries each last longer because they can kind of just like take over depending on which one is more powerful and they both act as a backup for one another. Well, if you have them in series, the effective voltage is the sum of the voltages. So essentially you add them up because they are in series. There is only one way for them to flow. Uh, and the battery life is equal to the battery life of one battery. Uh, it essentially dies quicker, but you have more voltage, more um, difference in charge, which makes more current, which will make a light bulb a little bit brighter instead of for a little bit longer like it would in parallel. Uses for series and parallel connections of cells. So in a flashlight, series cells are connected in series. So you always put like a flashlight batteries in the back and you put them in one, two, three, um, so that you get a higher voltage. And that higher voltage means more current, which means the bulb can be brighter. Uh, compare that to a lighthouse where you want constant light. You cannot have a time where the uh, light bulb is not working. So the cells are collected, connected in parallel, so the light is a little bit dimmer, but the battery lasts longer, and you can change one while the other one runs it, then you can change that one while the new one powers the lighthouse. So um, when you need to have constant power, parallel circuits are really, really handy. Um, parallel circuits exist in your house, which uh, we will talk about, I believe, in a little bit here uh, after this slide. Uh, some technologies for um, series and parallel circuits. So we have these things called circuit breakers, and I believe, yeah, they're on this page here. Circuit breakers uh, is a safety device in an, in an electrical circuit which acts, to switch, which acts as a switch to cut off power to a circuit if the current exceeds a safe level. So circuit breakers work to ensure that the current in a circuit does not reach a level where the wires would get too hot. 
and start a fire. So circuit breakers are a safety valve, and if there's too much current going through them, they go off. So you can see in this picture that we have circuit breakers, we have our main pow uh, power panel, and then we have our main circuit breaker. Then we have breakers for each part of our house, and we could cut this breaker and our clothes dryer would go off, but our bedroom lights, our kitchen plugs, and our stove would all stay on. If you cut this one, this uh, stops the entire br uh, house circuit from working, so that would um, make everything go off. And each one of these is a safety valve for each um, of the appliances after it. So we have a main safety valve essentially, and then all of these circuit breakers are circuit safety valves for what comes after it. And if the stove circuit breaker goes off, everything else still works. It's okay. You can just go flip that breaker and make sure you don't use too much power. Um, and we also have grounding terminals. Uh, it's the, the grounding terminal is the round prong of an electrical plug. It allows uh, ac excess current to flow from an electrical device to the ground and it prevents an electrical shock. It might also prevent your computer from being oversurged um, and things like that. So uh, grounding terminals are like an extra parallel circuit that allows extra current to flow down and a circuit breaker is a switch that cuts off circuits when current gets too high to different places. So again, this is a picture of circuit breakers that you would have in your house. And this is kind of a combination of series and parallel. So uh, this is in series with the with everything else. So if you cut this, everything else would break. Uh, it would go off. But if you break one of these, these are in parallel to each other. So they can kind of be a combination um, together, which can be unique and which we may talk about uh, in the future. I'm not 100% sure right now. Um, so there's some questions that you should do, some practice uh, that gets you more familiar with series and parallel circuits. But thank you so much for watching, everyone. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you soon.